It's the old canary in the coal mine. You find the, the least liked group, you know, that everybody can kind of agree on. It's like they're the ones that should get the worst treatment, whatever that may be. And in this case, it's, you know, brutal disfigurement of, of somebody's body. Louisiana will be the first state in the nation to allow the surgical castration of sex offenders. Louisiana was already the toughest law and order state in the U.S. More people are locked up in Louisiana's jails per capita than anywhere in the world. But it's just got even tougher, thanks to its radical new Republican governor, Jeff Landry. And he's also bringing God back into lawmaking. So Governor Jeff Landry um, was elected last year, a landslide victory, very well supported in Louisiana coming in in January just of this year. He previously served as attorney general. He really has some of those, those uh, conservative credentials that have made him really popular coming into the governorship. Governor Landry's legislating blitzkrieg has been a mixture of his own controversial initiatives and his enthusiastic adoption of others' ideas. The surgical castration bill was initially proposed by state representative Delisha Boyd. This year there was a story in The Advocate of a 51-year-old male being sought for the rape of a 12-year-old. In 2007, he was arrested for the aggravated rape of a 5-year-old, which means he beat the child. And I, I thought about where we live in Louisiana, which has one of the strictest abortion laws on the books. This baby had to carry a baby for a rapist that could have been stopped in 2007. So chemical castration has been on the statute in Louisiana Almost 20 years. for some time. Mm -hmm. That's already there then. You can already castrate someone via chemicals. Why do you need to surgically well, remove their balls? Well, you know, uh, chemical castration has been on the books for almost 20 years and I can only find two cases. I was looking for something to be uh, a deterrent and men seem to be very sensitive about their genital areas. So if I could deter one person from beating a child, I'm all for it. The bill also includes removing women's ovaries mm -hmm. if they commit the same horrible mm -hmm. offences. Mm -hmm. Why did you include that? Because ovaries don't create testosterone yes. as males' testicles do. This year as well, in uh, Terrebonne Parish, a mother and her boyfriend beat, shot and burned her daughter after he raped her. I, something should be done to her too. Even though these are horrendous cases. Mm -hmm. What do you say to the argument this is unnecessarily barbaric, unnecessarily cruel, making people physically suffer, having already served out their jail terms? Cruel and unusual punishment is what happened to that five-year-old. I couldn't help noticing there's a sign behind Odessa that says Humane Legislator of the Year. Yeah. What did you win that for? Protecting the animals. I protect everybody, you know, I do. Uh, that's from the Humane Society. Um, and do you think there's a slight contradiction between being Humane Legislator of the Year and wanting to Search so you castrate people? How? The fact that I'm going to fight for it. So the dog deserves protection, but the child does not? Surgical castration. Why do you so strongly oppose it? It sets a standard. It sets a new floor of like what's acceptable. I mean, back in the day, it was nothing to like hang somebody high and light them on fire. A lot of these like dark ages types of punishments are things that we thought we left behind. But when the state is willing to set a standard of like, this is our level of brutality, well, now you're, you're being a role model for, for brutality. Where does it stop? You know, are we going to chop off the hands of, of thieves next? Another argument made against this is it is really not for the state to be legitimizing pretty hardcore violence, mutilating people. The state is bigger and better than that. The state should be setting a better example. We are setting a better example. The example is we're going to protect our children at all costs. Governor Landry has had a very busy first year. Um, so he came into office in January and really hit the ground running. He inherited the office from a Democrat. So in a lot of ways, it was like he was playing catch up. He was trying to get Louisiana to catch up to some of his conservative counterparts and some specific legislation. Uh, then he really started trend setting. So he started to sign bills, sign legislation that took Louisiana past that, so to speak, conservative finish line of catching up, and now he's really in the vanguard. He's, he's stepping out in front of the pack and leading on some other things. We see that with the Ten Commandments. This bill mandates the display of the Ten Commandments in every classroom in public, elementary, secondary, and most education schools in the state of Louisiana. The moment went viral when the schoolgirl behind Governor Landry unfortunately fainted, unknown to him. Respect the rule of law, you gotta start from the original lawgiver. We 
which was Moses. The governor has had some really interesting things to say around this bill. I believe when he signed it, his, his exact phrasing was, I can't wait to be sued, um, which of course happened. Louisiana Attorney General Liz Morrill asking a judge to dismiss the lawsuit against controversial HB 71, a law requiring the display of the Ten Commandments in all public classrooms and state buildings. You're a friend of Governor Landry, you're a supporter. Do you think it's a particularly tolerant thing to do to enforce one type of religion against all others on kids? Well, I don't think it is enforcing one type of religion on kids. If those posters in school and they find them so vulgar, just tell the child not to look at it. I think the objective was to uh, teach kids about the role that um, faith and God and these, these principles that are embodied in the Ten Commandments uh, that they played in, in the founding of our country. And you can see that um, as clear as day if you look at the back of the United States Supreme Court building, um, which the very center of which is, is Moses holding the tablet. Just after signing the Ten Commandments in, into law, Governor Landry said, I can't wait to be sued. <laughs> Why does he want to be sued? Well, I think he sued. just knew that he would be sued. I mean, I, I think that uh, he embraced the opportunity to defend the law. And but it's more it's than quite that, isn't it? He, no, obviously wants, I think it's he wants to fight. That. Clearly wants well, to fight. Well, he wanted, I mean, he supported the bill and he knew that the bill was controversial. I mean, you, you know, it was, it, it really sort of surprised me the degree of outrage over this this bill you know i mean we had requests for interviews from all over the country um here you are <laughs> from outside the country every school has to hang the ten commandments on their classroom walls that sounds bad valid think, no i don't think that sounds valid at all that sounds responsible no i i don't agree with that i think it should be a separation of church and and state surgical castration for child sex offenders. So if you commit a crime on a child at the age of 13, your testicles will be removed by the state. It sound like we're going back to slavery days. You don't need your manhood if you're going to do that. I agree with it. I'm not opposed to it. I 100% I, I support it. So this chemical castration already exists in the state. They can give you drugs, but this goes Take one step away. further. Take it away. They got to stick them, snatch it, whatever, do it. Okay, he's introduced what's called the don't say gay law. So teachers aren't allowed to discuss the sexuality of their pupils, whether they're gay or straight, for example. Mm. Oh, I think that's a good rule. That should be left up to the yeah, yeah, that yeah. shouldn't even be a discussion in the classroom. Yeah. Like he's made it easier to carry a concealed firearm. So he's reduced the age from 21 to 18 and given some sort of immunity for people if they use their firearms against lawsuits. It's not the gun, it's the person, you know. I feel like if you have gone through all the steps legally, then you can own a gun and take in all the tests. Agreed. Wow, 18 is kind of young. Yeah, I think so too. I'd have probably shot somebody's ass off at that age if I was carrying. <laughs> and there is something else that Governor Landry has done. Like a lot of US states, Louisiana stopped using the electric chair as a method of execution in 1991, switching to the more humane lethal injection. The state's old chair was nicknamed Gruesome Gertie, and it's been in a museum at Angola State Penitentiary for the last 30 years. But Governor Landry has now brought back the electric chair too. I would love to see a bill this year that, that says that the governor has to be the executor, for one. Um, you know, very Game of Thrones, you know, he who levies the sentence should swing the sword or whatever. Um, because I think that we as a society, if we're going to choose to do things, we should be willing to do them ourselves and not kind of like pass the buck. And there are some legislators and there's definitely some people who are advocates. I get, you know, again, it's like understandable, but it's like, no, thou shalt suffer. It's a big vein in the Louisiana criminal legal system is that suffering will be a part of the punishment, not just like separation from the community. You've already got lethal injection. You can, the state already has a way of killing people if it wants to. Why do you need particularly cruel versions or what versions that inflict pain? Well, it's, it is being used in other states already. Mm. And so far, the United States Supreme Court has not blocked any of those executions. And there are people out there who have, are, are the families, members of, um, of victims of egregious murders. And they are waiting to see justice carried out for, for the, their, their, their loved one. 
And we have also seen a dramatic increase in crime mm. in a number of places in our state. And, and what you saw or what we saw, I mean, I think was, uh, was a reaction to that when there was a change in uh, the governor's office. This, the Governor Landry, and, and frankly I did too, made a commitment to the people um, when we were running for office that we would bring down crime in our state. What do you say to the government that people actually want this stuff? Louisianans like this stuff and this is a democracy. Personally, you know, my analysis is that it's more connected with people's socioeconomic situation, right? And our version of capitalism having failed us with automation, making people lose a lot of jobs. You know, there used to be about 6,000 people working on the docks and about 600 people up in Angola. And now there's about 6,000 people in Angola, 600 people working on the docks. It's hard. And so people are looking for um, a culprit. And in the same way that, you know, Hitler would not have like gotten all the energy he got if not for being on the heels of the World War I loss. And the governor's even managed to get into a quite public Twitter spat with a celebrity rock star. <laughs> Yeah, Mick Jagger. I hope uh, Governor Landry is enjoying the show with us tonight. He's very inclusive too, you know. We'd like to include him even if he wants to take us back to the Stone Age. The news of the moment at the time uh, and Jeff Landry from, I believe he was in Baton Rouge at the time, tweeted, tweeted back at him, um, you know, just getting into a little, a little spat on, on Louisiana politics. What's your reaction to Mick Jagger? Well, you know, Mick Jagger's welcome to come to Jazz Fest any, any time here, and I thought the governor handled it good-naturedly and, uh, you know. He was quite happy to re-engage on Twitter. Yeah, man. yeah. He responded. I thought it was a funny response. A big support of his is Donald Trump. Donald Trump in, endorsed a, him for governor. He's been a big supporter of Donald Trump since before Donald Trump's first election as president of the United States. Some are writing up the Landry agenda, all his reforms, uh, as effectively MAGA 2.0. This is potentially where the Make America Great movement then goes. Mm -hmm. Do you think the Landry agenda has potential to go nationwide, to get picked up by the right all across the US? I think it's possible. Jeff Landry, is he's tight with the Trumps. First of all, Louisiana Attorney General, where's Jeff? Jeff Landry, Jeff. Oh, I could use you, Jeff, you're so good. He is so tough and so good, and I agree with so much of what you do, almost all of it. I'm not sure that I've seen anything I don't agree with. Donald Trump endorsed him during the governor's race. I am endorsing your attorney general, Jeff Landry. Donald Trump Jr. has been pretty friendly with Jeff Landry on some of his fundraising events. Jeff Landry, governor's gator hunt. Donald Trump Jr. during one of these alligator hunts ended up jumping in a swamp and swimming around an alligator infested bit of water. Yeah, you know, we all make choices. <laughs> Donald Trump could be re-elected president quite soon, and he'd have a new agenda. Could you see some of these reforms that, that Governor Landry you bring through in Louisiana adopted on a, on a higher level, on, on a national stage? I, I think that what President Trump sees in Jeff and what Jeff sees in President Trump is um, a willingness not to be afraid and um, to get out and fight for the people in a way that, um, that may not necessarily be consistent with what uh, the mainstream media believes is appropriate or, um, or some embedded group in the government thinks is appropriate. But some people have said the Landry agenda, you could basically summarize of you know, putting God back into sort of lawmaking and being very, very tough on law and order. That could well be a prototype for MAGA 2.0, you know, the Make America Great movement. We'll have a future and that potentially could be it. There is certainly a pulse among a lot of President Trump's supporters and Governor Landry's supporters um, that is, is, believes in the kind of foundations of our country, believes in the Constitution, is very patriotic. Those are people who want to see our country great again and don't believe that we are on that path. Could you see Trump perhaps adopting some of the Landry agenda nationwide if he's re-elected? That's something we talk about a lot. Like here in Louisiana, we are the flashpoint. You know, we're the, the tip of the spear because you have this perfect storm. People that care about America really need to see the civil rights epicenter here in Louisiana. They need to come on down and fight. And we got extra room. People could use our office if they want.
a lot of the intellectual heft done for Governor Landry, for his policies, the more controversial ones, has been carried out by something called the Louisiana Family Forum. They're run by an evangelical lay preacher called Gene Mills, uh, and we're just about to hear his take. Louisiana, unlike most places in the United States, 60% of our population attends church weekly. Jeff was one of those. I'm one of those. So are most of the families throughout this state. 60% of the families or individuals live within 60 miles of where they were born. So family connectedness, a faith underpinning, and a sense that we could do better was a shared value that he communicated well, and he had the courage to take on opposition when he felt like he threatened that. And he's done that very successfully. If Donald Trump is elected president again, could you see Donald Trump adopting some of this agenda? I don't think it's so much of an agenda as it is the truth. I think America is in disarray right now because bad ideas have consequences. It's the reason we're facing our threats at the border. It's the reason the economy is facing unprecedented levels of inflation or the cost of living. And I think many people are responding to that with, we're concerned. What can we do? I certainly hope America will return to her foundations. Do I think we get back to the foundations? Yeah, I think we need to. And do you see Donald Trump as an ally in your cause? He certainly has been with regard to the life issue. He certainly has been with regard to protecting our borders. And I think he will move forward. His agenda is more closely aligned. And I know because we help, we help write the policy and procedures of the party that, whose platform he stands on.